So I wanted to make a part two to my deck building is dead video because I think that it got a really good reception and there were some people requesting to do a part two on this. So I figured I would read your comments as we talk about why deck building in Yu-Gi-Oh has just gotten really stale and is basically non-existent. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Three, two, and one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, AvrielR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button as I get comfortable in my chair so that we can climb even higher the 1400 ladder. It's always hard to keep track of my sub count because my most craziest uh, exploded YouTube video is a YouTube short that got over 100,000 views now of my don't buy Steam Deck video, and I've gained a lot of subs from that. Of course, some of those are going to fall off because they realize I don't make Steam Deck videos. So anyway, it's just kind of funny. But I've got the comments pulled up on my other monitor here as I'm trying to zoom in on them. We're not going to go through every single one um, because there are several comments here that are kind of long um, that I just am not going to have the time to go through. But there were a couple here that I wanted to point out. So if you happen to see this video, then go watch it and I don't respond to your comment. It's because maybe it wasn't there. So be sure that you always have the bell ticked on and be commenting on our videos. So let's go ahead and start off with this one here. This person says you should do a follow up video on this. That's what I'm doing, pimp. I think it's really time we start having a serious discussion and hitting a lot of these generically good cards that the Yu-Gi-Oh community doesn't want to talk about. There was a time where code money, I love it, didn't let these cards hang around too long just to get players and buy new product they were harsh very true the fact ash has been played for years since its release and is a staple at this point is outright insane to me and has hurt deck building and he's absolutely right you know uh what has it been since i think maximum crisis that we got ash blossom and the whole point that i made with that deck building is dead video is that back in the day when you had all of these staple-esque cards that you had to play whether it was sinister serpent delinquent duo pot agree graceful charity the list goes on and on you there was like a pile of like 20 plus cards that you had to play in any given deck before you even decided on what your main deck idea was going to be whether it was exodia whether it was rat box whether it was 2002 beatdown whatever the case may be it wasn't until what was it 2003 i'm thinking back to all my retrospectives that i did shameless plug i think it was 2003 with the yada lock hand control where we finally actually got cards banned before it was just a limited and semi-limited list then we actually got banned cards where they went through and banned a bunch of stuff uh well they actually didn't ban pot agree till 2005 but like chaos emperor dragon yada grossu things like that and then as the years went by they banned more and more cards now we're seeing something similar with all of these hand traps you know if i'm testing a new deck idea whether it's tempi dragon snake eye whatever side note i found out uh today just a couple hours ago that tempi dragon can king calamity lock turn one yeah it's disgusting this deck's gonna be tier one but besides the point I'm testing the deck, and especially with something that has a small main deck archetype engine, whether it's Snake Eye, Tempai, whatever, um, you have a lot of non-engine space. Well, what am I throwing in right out of the gate to at least test it? Three copies of Talents, maybe a Call by the Grave, three Ash, three Valor, three Imperm, Nibs, the list goes on. I mean, possibly D Shifter if the deck can play Shifter. It's a no-brainer. You know, back in even, say, like Edison format, where granted you didn't have as many hand traps, there was more to consider. Like, okay, I'm going to play a quick draw Dandy Warrior deck. I'll play a couple Nimble Mega Hamsters. I think I'll cut it down from two to three so I can throw in a copy of Bottomless. I may even tech in a copy of Dimensional Prison. You had these tech cards that kind of made your deck overall more unique. Whereas instead now you've got, I would argue, 15 to 20 slots in your deck that have to be non-engine if you want any chance of competing. And it's not just because Snake Eye is tier zero. It's because of the fact that we have so many generically good non-engine cards that you may think helps lower tier decks compete, but it may help those lower tier decks go from like here to here. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. But all of the good meta decks that are already up here are going to be shining much brighter than those more roguish picks. This person says, I've been feeling this way for quite some time. These decks we are seeing feel like pile decks with a bunch of just generically good cards thrown together that we see in every single deck, which makes the deck feel very cookie cutter, very true. <clears throat> Instead of the usual archetype you're supposed to be playing helping you win the game, 
but players are forced to play these cards due to power creep, and Konami used to hate these cookie cutter decks and deal with them by limiting or banning cards. Nowadays, Konami could care less, but they have to do something because the problems only going to get worse. It's not fun deck building anymore because everything's become so cookie cutter in the competitive scene. I would say that that's very true outside of, you know, kind of like what I said in the video before, like semantic examples, right? Like a stun deck, an Exodia deck, uh, a 60 card pile, like we saw with the Volcanic FTK that the guy who actually did well with the deck commented on my video and said he got like fifth place at a, a regional recently. You know, those pile decks, especially whenever they're like 60 cards, you're not really going to be playing hand traps. You're mostly going to be paying, be playing a bunch of different really good engines and that's why a lot of people like the deck based aka as we called it on the channel badass sexy engine deck because i think the term base is absolutely idiotic um <clears throat> but based was a deck where it was just good shit dot deck as people used to say back in the day it was just a good pile of cards and uh you can still kind of do that to this day whether it's volcanic ftk or otherwise and you can see actual like interesting deck building in that regard but when it comes to like just a strict 40 to maybe 45 card deck you're gonna see the same plus 20 plus cards played um and it just makes deck building non-existent like what are you throwing in that isn't different from like a snake eyes deck compared to whatever deck you're playing like ooh, you're playing two nibiru instead of three or one like it, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> this person said, uh, there are some good cards and hand traps we have right there that are recently new. Oh, he said right there because he's like talking about the video screen that I was showing. We have right there that are currently new that could see play. But why play those cards when I can just mindlessly splash in cards like Ash, Droll, Shifter, Nib, etc.? This is what I'm talking about. I'm trying to make sure I don't accidentally clap on my mic. But this person hit the nail on the fucking head. Why play anything new when you can fall back on non-engine like Talents, Shifter, Nib, etc.? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they said these cards just outshine a lot of the newer. Exactly. Konami's trying to push, and that's a point that Konami used to deal with. But I guess because they know as the game is so unbalanced that we need these cards just to not lose on turn one if we didn't have them. I literally can't imagine a world in Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore without playing with Nib. Like, that seems so foreign to me now because we're just so used to playing... Uh, either through or uh, playing around a Nibiru, right? Like, how many times do you hear people say, here's a combo video, this is how you play around Nib, or they'll say, this deck is so fucking good that you can just play through the Nib, uh, and then that's when, like, I would, I would argue, like, any deck now, with how much non-engine stuff that you are pretty much forced to play, any deck that can play through Nib and not care is most likely a tier one deck like if you look at all the tier one decks ever since nib has come out <clears throat> i would argue more in recent times since when nib first came out not everybody was really privy to it like some people were just side decking it but nib feels like such a staple now no matter how many copies but you look at these newer decks and a lot of times they can make their board by summon number four or even put up a negate by summon number five so that they can build their board it kind of defeats the purpose of why the fuck did you give us Nib in the first place when all of the meta decks that you put out now, and by meta decks, I mean things that are seen as tier one, like, you know, not your locals who where your guy of the Fierce Knight deck can get you a top. <clears throat> why even make these archetypes that can put up a negate by summon number five or build a board by summon number four and, like, Nib is fucking pointless? Like... I understand that there's the mind game trick of that where it's like, okay, such and such deck is the best deck in the room. It doesn't care about Nib. It plays around it. Therefore, people aren't going to play Nib. But then you have the 4D chess where it's like, oh, people aren't playing Nib. So now I'm going to play Nib. And it's like this constant teeter-totter thing. It's it's absolutely insane. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can find any more comments here. I'm sorry. I'm losing my voice. Um, da -da -da -da. No lie, I think it's time for Konami to seriously look at and start hitting a lot of these staple cards and hand traps that are commonly played in literally every deck. Konami used to hit cards like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, not because they were broken, but because everyone played those splashable cards in their decks. Very true. And they were getting in the way of Konami pushing new product. We're getting to that point again. Do you really want to play 03 or 04 cookie cutter decks again? I know I don't. Again, <clears throat> um, 
it's going to be interesting to see if Konami actually does ever do that. I talked a couple years ago now, or maybe just over a year now, uh, talking about how Ash Blossom needs to be banned. And I do feel that Ash Blossom, to a degree, should be hit at some point. I think it was hit at one point, like to one or the or to two in the OCG for a while, um, because it was just so oppressive. Like it was played and everything. It's still played and everything. Um, but rogue decks that lose to one hand trap, like can't even compete because we have so many hand traps. Um, you know, that that's why I think like as cool as Gimmick Puppet FTK is, I don't really think it's going to be all that good because it just auto loses to a droll and shifter. And like, yeah, you can make the argument of we'll just draw the out five head or they have to draw the out. But when you're playing 15 to 20 fucking hand traps, you're all but guaranteed to draw that out. Whether it's, you know, one hand trap or two or whatever, you know, the, the fact that Tempai can play 20 plus hand traps and be competitively good and still consistent blows my mind. It's not about, oh, they have to draw the out. They're going to have the fucking out because they're playing so many. When half of your deck is hand traps or just staple good cards, you're bound to see them because they are plentiful. So anyway, I just wanted to read some comments here from y'all. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I need to go rest my voice and I'll see you in the next video.